Hello and welcome to Manif 2015 inside the Filmmaker Studio. Our guest this morning is Jane Anderson. Jane Anderson casts gritty dramas to, through to fun-filled comedies. She's been in casting for over 10 years, working her way up to the ranks of assistant, then casting associate until finally going out on her own in 2010. Films include The Whistleblower, Hard Boiled, Sweet, oh, Hard Boiled Sweet, sorry, and recent comedy features Down, Down Dog and Cumray, oh, you've made this difficult. Cumre BAFTA winning convenience, <laughs> after, as well as the thriller and soon to be released Monochrome. Her small screen credits include the spying on Hitler's army, the secret recordings, and the award nominated series All at Sea and Hank Zipser. In her years as a casting associate, she's also worked on the likes of Sherlock, Moe, Tess, oh, Tess of the D'Urbervilles, The Diary of Anne Frank, Greenwing, Mark of Cain, and Housewife 49. She's a member of the Casting Directors Guild of Great Britain and Ireland and lives between Manchester and London. Right, let's get straight to it. Where were you born? Uh, I was born in North London. And did you go to school in North London? I did. I went to school in Highgate Wood, which is a comprehensive in Crouch End. And did your interest in film begin at school? No. I would say my interest in film actually came from my dad, who um, is very passionate about watching films. Ah, uh, right. Okay. And talking about... So we used to like watch Buster Keaton films, and he'll tell me how he did the stunts, and... Bruce Lee films, and he'd have all the backstory about how Bruce Lee became, you know, the master of his craft, and um, lots of old black and white movies on a Saturday afternoon. And then I didn't start uh, learning about film until I got to college. Right. Okay. And what did you study? Any particular classes at college? Or well, I was doing. Uh, I did a photography A level, and then did a photography B tech. Right. And in the B tech, we started doing film studies, and then I went on to do uh, contemporary media practice, Ooh, which wow. sounds very poncy. Uh, but it was basically media, mixed media. Right. Um, and though I specialised in photography, I was also doing film. And because I am um, quite bossy and like to organise, uh, I ended up working on um, films with my fellow students, which then led me to work in film in production when I left uni. Gave up the photography, just do it as a hobby. <laughs> um, and uh, that led on to other production work. Right, so you, when you mentioned your dad before, was yeah. he interested in film just as a hobbyist, or was yeah. he actually involved in no, film? No, not involved. He's an electrician, ah, just right. absolutely loves, fil lo loves films, and um, would get just as, as excited as us when we went to cinema to see Star Wars and um, Flash Gordon and Herbie Goes Bananas, you know, like, he just, <laughs> he loves it, he loves the whole experience, so, yeah. That's brilliant. So, you mentioned that being, you know, you, worked, you started to like the production side of yeah. things. What led you to casting? Well, um... I was very good at production. Hmm. I ended up working commercial, so it was lots of long hours, lots of work, lots of partying, um, and lots of money, but no fulfillment because it wasn't creative enough for me. I was organizing other people's creativity. Um, so as I'm a bit of an adventurer at heart, I took my rucksack and my camera and pissed off around the world, <laughs> <laughs> and ended up living in Oz for many years, uh, doing completely different things that weren't related to the industry at all. And then when I came home after five years, uh, wanted to get back in the industry, but didn't want to work in production. And as a production manager in commercials, I'd often done the casting um, and loved it. My brother is now a retired dancer, but so I grew up with performers, both actors and dancers. And so I was always the observer. And so sort of casting made sense. So um, when I came home, I wrote off to various casting directors, researched people, so only sort of wrote to the people that I, who did work that I liked, um, managed to get my foot in the door, did two weeks with Sarah Crow, which then led on to uh, nine months with Di Carling, who I call the mothership, because she sort of um, taught me all I know, really, and she had really good values, which I hope I've carried on. She's now retired. Um, and then, yeah, and that was it, foot in the door, and it was just... And you're Perfect. away. And so it's because it is creative, but also you've got to do a lot of organising and um, a lot of budgets and a lot of Excel spreadsheets, which I know some people out there know I love. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, so it sort of ticks all the boxes. So when you're casting, let's say, and you can tell Al wrote this because it says, what's the first thing you look for in a leading man? But let's change that to leading actor. Well, uh, my facetious answer is a pulse. Mm. Um, <laughs> but um, there isn't one thing. Yeah. You know, it's yes, there are pe people that have star quality um, and a presence when they w walk in the room. But basically, you know, it's it's the whole 
it depends on the project, it depends on the character, it depends on the combination of who they're going to be acting with. Um, you know, there isn't a specific one thing. It's just, it's a, a work in progress, really. So it depends on the project, then, what it, it is? It does, yeah. And, I mean, you know, certain roles suit certain people. And, it, you know, I mean, I think Fassbender is the perfect example in that he would be auditioning for things, you know, like guest leads and series, or he'd up, be up for a lead, and, you know, we'd always, we always knew he was good. And then he didn't quite... He just would never quite get it. He'd be like second on the list or be in a like short list um, to get the role. Mm. And then Gary Davey, who I also have worked with, um, cast him in Hunger, which was just the perfect role for him, and it made him shine. And it, you know, everyone could see his brilliance. And he's obviously gone off and done marvelous things ever since. So, yeah, I mean, it's just sometimes it's the right role. So for a spiral. Right so for aspiring actors out there, yeah. then sometimes if you don't, there's no point in getting disheartened when you get a rejection because it might be I more good. I think every actor has to deal with 90% of the time is rejection. I would never do it. I couldn't do it. But, um, you know, I think uh, I was chatting with Erin, in fact, last night and about the fact that if a casting director has brought you in, we know that you're right for the role. Otherwise, we wouldn't be bringing you in the room. If you don't get the role, that's not a failure. We're always going to bring him in for other things because we know, you know, we like what you do. So is, there, it, is it different when you're looking for a lead compared to a, you know, supporting actor or actress? Well, I think often with leads, especially now, it's all quite political because it's all about, you know, uh, production companies or stations or distributors wanting to get a certain name to get people to, to watch um, a film or a series or whatever, which as a creative person I can be quite frustrating uh, and I think if the project is good enough and is marketed well, then it doesn't matter who. You don't have to be a big name to sell the project. The project should sell itself. Mm. But of course, you know, money people don't see it like that. So, has it ever been? Has there ever been disagreement, sort of, you know, in a cast between you and the other casting, man, you know, people in charge of casting about you just have a real feeling about someone and you've, you know, you push for them. I've definitely fought for people mm. in the past. Um, and I will fight for people if I think they're going in the wrong direction. I think generally you're sort of all thinking in the same sort of terms of, and even if it's not one person, it might be one or two that, you know, so you're sort of happy if they go one way. Um, no, I've definitely changed people's minds, though, on a film about, uh, with someone because they had seen this actress as a certain type of actress and they didn't think she would be right for the character. And I just pushed and pushed and pushed. And it's like, you've got it, we've got to bring her in, we've got to bring her in. And, and finally she came in and of course they're like, she's amazing, yes, let's do it, so. When you mentioned, you know, she was seen as a certain type of actress, is typecasting, like, can that be a real problem for actors, you know, when they're in the casting process? I think it all just depends on the, you know, the people you, uh, you're with. Some people are open to giving people, I mean, the best thing for me is casting someone in a character that they don't normally play. Mm -hmm. That's the most satisfying. Um, some people are very fixed on, you know, oh, they were in Coronation Street, or oh, they were in the bill, they were regular, oh, I can't have them in my, you know, film, which is nonsense. They're actors, they've got to work, you know. So um, it just, it, it goes both ways, you know, it right. really does. So you mentioned then that, you know, people get focused on you were in Coronation mm. Street, or you were in this, and you find, you know, there's a real joy in getting someone out of that sort of yeah. box that they've been trapped yeah. in, essentially, by people saying, oh, they can only do, yeah. you know, Roy Cropper from Coronation yeah. Street. Uh, Although so I think that would be quite difficult. Yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But when they take him out of, the, you know, when you get an actor out of that, so mm. how does that make you feel? Well, it's good because I think, you know, it's, it, is, it is, and I know people have been typecast. Um, I know that, uh, that uh, you know, if he's played like a, an abuser mm. in a soap and then you book, often people don't work for a couple of years because they're like, oh no, we can't have him playing a nice character because people are going to relate him to, you know, such and such. And so then by bringing them out of that and refreshing people's memories to show them, as, you know, that they are an actor and they can create characters, you know, the actor is not the character. Yeah. Um, then yeah, it is, it is good. My job's done. But it's a great feeling. Yeah. So when you worked on, you worked on Sherlock, I yeah. must ask, were you, did you get to meet Benedict Cumberbatch? Yes. I'm a casting director, of course I've met Benedict Cumberbatch. What was he like? <laughs> <laughs> He's very nice. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to know from yeah, you. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, <laughs> so we're now going to move into the James Lipton style yes. inside the actor's studio. Yeah. And I know you've been preparing for this. I have. As everyone who 
saw racking yesterday's brain, first one who's been the racking their brains yeah. and preparing. So we'll start with, what's your favourite word? Discombobulated. Discombobulated, that's an excellent yeah. one. And your least favourite word? Conversate. Conversate? I don't think I've never heard that oh, one. Oh, yeah. What does it mean? It's like, means conversing. Oh, oh God. Like, say conversing, don't say conversate. <laughs> <laughs> what is it that yeah. turns you on? Uh, kindness. Oh, snap. <laughs> and what is it that turns you off? Vindictiveness. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Can you, when you, you know, when you cast in, yeah. that kindness and sort of, do you th does that inform sort of casting decisions sometimes? Do you see sort of a softness in people and you think they'd be perfect for this part or? Uh, yeah, possibly. I think sometimes it's more actually the other way. I see people that often play like really nice roles. You can see, you'll see a darkness in them. Oh. You go, right, I'm going to have you as a bad dude. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. So what sound or noise <laughs> is it that you love? Uh, the first pour of a bottle of wine. <laughs> <laughs> and what sound or noise do you hate? Uh, the tinny sound coming out of someone's headphones on the bus. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. a good one. <laughs> if you could have it do any other profession, what would you do? I would be a product designer. A product designer? I get really irritated by designs that aren't logical. Really? Aren't um, functional. Can you think of any examples? No. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I do. I get really irritated. Well, no, actually, I can think of an example. Um, especially when it's sort of design over content, where mm. it just looks good, but it doesn't function to its what it should be. So I work with someone who was very much into you know, what things looked like. And I think you can get designs where they look good, but they also do what they're supposed to do. So it was a desk lamp. OK. So of course, with a desk lamp, Especially in the winter, you need to be able to see your keyboard, you need to be able to see your desk. And it was very, be very beautiful, ornate lamp, but it was like a little, it was sort of scooped like that with a little um, lampshade on it that put no light on the desk, so it was completely irrelevant. That, with that irritates me. Those That's it. Things. <laughs> so first one, after you've yeah. casting director, yeah. lamp designer. Well, it doesn't have to be a lamp, but yeah. Is there any profession that you just wouldn't want to attempt? Well, probably would be an actor. Sorry, people. Um, oh. But that's just because I think it's a really, it's a really hard job to do, and it's constant. Pro most of the time, it's rejection, and it's probably very personal, and you get very worried about how people see. I couldn't do it. Is there anything you think that you need? You know, an actor really needs to sort of, you know, succeed in the business? Because we've heard before I people. I think you just have perseverance. Perseverance yeah. and tenacity. Yeah. Yeah. And just not take the rejections personal, you know, personally. I mean, I have to go through it as a casting director. I go up for jobs and often other uh, casting directors, you know, will get a job and it's like they've got the last job that I went up for, which are act I'm sure actors out there have the same, you know, experience. Um, but that's, you know, far fewer exper experiences within a year that an actor would go in, you know, auditioning regularly. You can only get a certain percentage of work. Yeah. So, yeah. And You've got to keep going. <laughs> and you love it. And if heaven exists, when you, when you arrive at the pillar gates, yes. what would you like God to say? What a fantastic ride. Ah, <laughs> that's a good one as well. <laughs> Jane Anderson, everyone. Now, we're going to... I can't see anybody. No, I neither can I. So we're, we're going to open it up to the audience. We can't see you, but our lovely person walking around with a mic can. So if you have any questions, raise your hands now, please. There's one at the back there. Hello there. Um, a question about show reels from, oh, from yes. actors. I, I know from doing my research, you, you hate montages. Yes. So we, we won't we'll, touch we, on that. Yeah, one. we've done that one, yeah. But uh, <laughs> apart from that, what, what are you looking for in show reels? Do you prefer variety or do you prefer sort of something that fits specifically for no, that? No, I'd, I'd like to see diversity within a performance. You know, if you have those examples, uh, I think often uh, people also think they need to put a lot on their show, and they don't. I can make up my mind quite quickly about someone within sort of, you know, one scene or like 10 seconds, I'll know if I like them or not. Um, but yeah, if you have diverse roles and different accents, then definitely put them in. And if you really want a montage, though I and many other casting directors hate them, stick it at the end. <laughs> Um, and, and a second question as yeah. well. Um, in casting, obviously, when, when you do a film or something, you get a cast breakdown and, yeah. and the script and stuff. How much, sort of, if any, outside the box casting or ideas do you come up with? As in, 
you know, there's a specific character, yeah. you're reading the script and you think, well, actually it might work with, you know, if it's a, should be a 30 year old skinny guy, you could go, here's a 50 year old yeah, fat guy. I, <laughs> you know, yeah. That's extreme, but yeah, no, do definitely. you bring any of that sort of Absolutely. thing? Absolutely, because sometimes it is about, it's like, the, you know, what I was saying earlier on, it's the sort of jigsaw of, of, the, of the role. And so, you know, unless it's really specific to that character, that they have to be a certain size or ethnic background, then maybe not. But if, it, if it's open, then I'll bring in whoever's right for the role. Yeah, definitely. Any other questions? Oh, we've got two. Let's go for the middle one, and then we'll come to the front. Uh, hi there. Yeah, um, I'm, so I'm a sh I've directed short films so far. I'm about to kind of do my first feature, and I've obviously never worked with a casting director. Yeah. So I'm just wondering if you could just talk me generally, like I'm very naive and stupid, th through what that process would be between me, a director, and, and you, a casting director. Um, okay, so I get a script. I make up my mind quite quickly if I like it or not, because it has to... Uh, inspire me to start thinking about actors. I tend to start thinking about actors as soon as I read a script. Um, if I'm not thinking about actors and I'm reading the script, it's not quite working. Um, and then I'll go through that and uh, pick out all the characters, think about all the different people that could play those roles, discuss with the director what they want, you know, because often it's a brainstorming of the taste of what, you know, uh, you sort of, it's the, dynamic between you and a director and a producer of, of, of the creative, you know, the creative uh, path that you want to take. So you definitely get feedback from the director and the producer um, and sort of, you know, go off and come up with some more ideas and then edit them down and then, um, then send it out to agents so they can make some suggestions. And if they're any good, I'll bring those in. Uh, and then we will, then it's the auditioning and I will streamline, so I'll only bring in a certain amount of actors that I think are right for the role. And if from those actors you don't think there's anyone that's quite, get, you know, there's not someone that you really love, then I'll bring in more actors. Um, and then from that, make the decisions, put, I'll put the offers out, I then do the deals based on the budget that you have. Uh, and then I have to do the dance with agents about what people are getting paid. And then um, send out casting advice notes, which basically just summarise everything that's been agreed with the sort of deals which come from the production company in the sense of, you know, whether they get a car or whether they have to get a bus pass to get to wherever they're going. Um, and then, then it's over to you. And I left, leave, my, leave my chickens. Off they go. <laughs> Sounds good. You're hired. <laughs> Have you got a budget? <laughs> I believe we yes. had a question at the front. I'm just wondering if you can confirm something for me. Yes. Um, I've been, I have a website yeah. and I've been studying. I have uh, trackers on my website so I can see what the casting directors are looking at right. on, on my website. Okay. And, uh, and it seems to me that there's a... a consistent order, they're looking at my photo page, right. they're looking at my demo reel, yeah. and they're looking, then they're looking at my CV. Right. And they're not spending a lot of time on the CV <laughs> at all. Uh, they might have looked at IMDb already. Right, okay. But uh, can you just go through what you look at? If you look at someone's website, what do you, uh, and how, how, how much actually. emphasis are you putting on I each think thing? I, I think initially I'll look at IMDb for their credits. Okay, yeah. And then you want to look at the person, definitely. Because we're visual, yeah. You know, we look at headshots every day, so we're going to look at the person. Mm, do they look interesting? They look quite interesting. Um, and yes, definitely demo reels, or you know, to see what your style is. I, I guess because I'm auditioning quite often at this stage for independent films as well. Yeah. Maybe the CV isn't so important for them. Um, does it come into no, I play think more CV for? No, uh, quite important. But then I have, if there's not much on IMDb, then I would probably look. I'd look on the. I don't know if I'd necessarily go to it. For, I'm not actually. I couldn't even consciously think of which way I'd look at it. It depends on how your website is designed as well. Well, this is what I'm thinking, yeah. and right now I'm thinking I need to put a link to my IMDb on the homepage right. of the. Yeah. To organise it for you. I think that is the sort of main source, isn't it? I, th I think most people would look at an IMDb. Well, I had a, a casting director tell me if it's not on IMDb, it didn't it ha actually happen. <laughs> Something that I've done. Uh, if, but if that's bollocks, because basically mm -hmm. I've 
one of the shows that I've done, which I just noticed actually the other day, um, the secret recordings, the Hitler um, drama documentary I did, mm -hmm. which I cast, I hadn't got a credit on that. And it, so they make mistakes. And there's also, annoyingly, a film on there which I can't get off my... Uh, I can't get off. <laughs> which I basically sort of gave them some help on about four characters, and they did all the rest of the casting, and it's not good. Mm. And so it looks like I've cast that, and I didn't. <laughs> and I, IMZB won't take it off. So IMZB is not the gospel. Yep. Okay. But it does give you good indication. Yeah, and yeah. it should be a priority for me then. Yes, definitely. To, yeah. uh, as, a, as an initial... I mean, like on my website, I've got um, images of some of the projects I've done. That's my front page. And then a link to my CV. And then if you want to find out more, you go into the other pages. So I suppose it just depends. I haven't got a photo of myself on my website. Right. Yeah. And, and once it's out of your hands, I'm noticing as well that uh, recently um, I was uh, selected, uh, shortlisted by the casting director for uh, an Italian film. Yeah. Um, and um, so it was out of her hands. And I noticed that somebody else uh, in London, it was a co-production between London and Italy, um, had come back to my website, right. just looked at the photo page, and I didn't get the role. Um, so is, is something happening once it's out of your hands? What, it, what, it, what are they looking at uh, once it's out of your hands? Uh, what, who? What, uh, who's, sorry, say that again. That's what I mean. Once you've made your <laughs> recommendations, yeah. there are other people above you who are making decisions. Um, yeah, I mean, generally, it's sort of... Um, you, as a sort of casting director, director, producer, you tend to come up with a sort of shortlist and, and you'd send that to the exec or uh, of who you want in the role. Um, and then often it is one person. Sometimes you have to give them a selection so, because they want to see who the, sh the shortlist is. Uh, and then more often than not, this is with leads anyway, more often than not, they make the sort of final decision. But, you know, directors can try and fight their case if they think the exec's going the wrong way. But I don't make the decisions. I mean, I certainly inform them, but I don't make them. Yeah, so it's the directors, producers, exec producers, or distributors who are making the decisions. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, there's one. Hi. Um, so if, if you look at someone's showreel and yes. you're pretty impressed and you like them, does the CV, is it important, the credits? Uh, no. no, I think, um, you know, not everyone has, also some people don't have a lot of screen um, examples to put on. Mm. And I think if, I, if you've got anything that you can put on, even if it's a monologue or something, um, then that will, s and you might have not had much experience, you might have done two plays and, you know, one student film or something. Mm -hmm. But if on that showreel I see something that I like, then you go on a list. I've got loads of lists. <laughs> my spotlight, where I have yeah. people that you know I refer back to. So if I've got when I get a script, mm -hmm. and you know I come up with the ideas, and then I'll refer to those lists to mm -hmm. you know inspire me with some more. So yeah, you will get put in a yeah. You'll be organised in one of my folders. Do you, is <laughs> is there like um is there a judgment on because I've got I've got a few TV things where I've got a yeah. lot of theatre things. Yes. Yeah. So credits things. Um. You know, is there a judgment on theatre credits, or are they taken as seriously? I, I think that's a personal. That's personal. Uh, you know, we all work differently, and yeah. um, I don't do theatre casting, but then mm -hmm. I do watch a lot of theatre to see actors to see actors perform. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm always being taken to theatre because that's a lot of the way, as well as watching a lot of TV, um, which sounds fun, but actually it can get quite tedious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But. Uh, yeah, so that to me isn't anything. I mean, it just... And often on the theatre credits, you can see that they've played much different... Uh, a whole variety of characters mm -hmm. on TV they're not necessarily getting. They might have got one... You know, they're always playing a policeman in TV, but yet in theatre they've done really diverse... Oh, right, yeah, well, of course. So, I mean, whatever you've done, whatever it is, then put it on, because okay. it's, all rele it's all relevant. Yeah, brilliant, yeah. thank you. You, um, one of the first, hello, by the hello. way, good afternoon. Um, uh, you mentioned one of the first things you said was, was star quality. Um, 
Has there ever been a situation where an actor that you've, or an actress that you've not particularly thought much of, and you've seen them in something later and thought, how did I, did I miss that? How? Or vice versa, has there been something where, you know, other casting directors, if you're talking in the business, have said, oh, I'm not really a fan of that actor, and you've seen them and gone, how do you not see that this yeah, guy, I this mean, girl is fantastic? I think with casting, it is very much about personal taste. So, you know, you get employed based on your taste. So, um, yeah, completely. I will, you know, I've got friends who will rave about an actor and I find them excruciatingly irritating. Um, and I know they're a good actor, but they, I just don't like what they do. Um, so, yeah, I think there's absolutely, there's always going to be a, a var variant on people's choices. Yeah. Sometimes there's also that thing where, you know, someone's a big star and I, I often... I'm not going to say who this is, but because um, he's a very big star, and I often feel like he acts the same in whatever he does. And you go, yeah, I see why he's a big name and whatever. And then I, I've seen him in theatre recently, and he just completely changed my mind about him. I was like, okay, I get it now. He just was so different, and his whole, the way that he moved and everything. Well, I always think he acts a certain way, but he completely changed his, um, you know, his body, the way everything. It was amazing. Thank you. <laughs> I think I saw a few questions in the back there. Yes, there certainly are. Hello, Jane. Hello. Um, <laughs> does your relationship with an agent influence the actors that you oh. see? Um, it can do. <laughs> it can do. Um, I mean, if I like an actor, it doesn't matter who they're with, I think. But certainly... I think, yes, there are agents that I get on very well with, and I, so then I'm more likely to um, give their clients a go. But also I think you sort of get a sense of uh, a taste from an agent. You know, they have a certain list, that, and you know that they're, what they, they're going to give you. So therefore, if it's a relation, like a working relationship where it is a positive one, it's often positive because you like who they have as well. It sort of goes hand in hand sometimes. But yeah, you can be swayed. So if an agent's not answering your brief, yeah. are you more likely not to go back to them? Um, no, because if they've got actors that I already know are on their books and I want to bring in, then I would certainly uh, still... I mean, <laughs> when I send out my breakdowns on Spotlight, the things that come back, I just all I do is literally swear at my screen because people <laughs> don't read the blurb. They don't read the character information. So much so that they put when it is specifically an ethnicity and they put the completely wrong ethnicity on, it's like, well, what are you doing? Why are you not reading? If you're going to suggest people, you've got to see what the character is. Um, or completely wrong age where it is really relevant, you know. So, no, I'm, I'm always going to give people a go. Thank you. I'm not a fascist. <laughs> There's one at the back there. Our poor microphone girls lost their job. <laughs> um, I've heard that at the moment the trend is going towards self-tape within the first round of auditions. Is that something which you do? I, the only time I do self-tapes is if, if someone's not in the country oh. or they can't get to an audition. I think it's a lot of people can't self-tape. You need to be directed. And it is very hard to self-tape without having someone telling you exactly what they want yeah. uh, or just talking to a camera without reading with someone or reading with your mum which often happens. Um, but, uh, no, I think for me, self-taping is only if it's a necessity. Because often, you know, people are on jobs and they can't get... Or, you know, you're auditioning in London and people just can't afford to get there from Manchester and then you just, they self-tape. And I have, in fact, on Monochrome, which I did last year, um, the director was very open to self-tapes. Some directors don't want self-tapes. They want to see the actor in the room because they want to know who they are as a person as much as, you know, because lots of people are going to act, but it's also you're going to be on set with them for six weeks. You want to know if you're going to get on with them. Yeah. Um, and, but he was very open to self-tapes, and there was uh, two actors who we just couldn't get to, any, either the auditions in Manchester or in London, and they both got the job. Oh. So, but yeah, no, I don't... I, I love the audition process. I want people in the room. I don't want the self-tapes. <laughs> in the middle there? Hello. Hello again. Back again. <laughs> <laughs> Just on, on, on that last bit with yes. <clears throat> you know, actors coming in to the audition and stuff, yeah. what's your take on actors who try to be in character when they come <laughs> to the audition? Um. 
Um, it's sort of, I think often pe when people do that, it's because they've done too many commercials castings. Um, I think, like what, what I sort of said before, they, you know, the director and producer want to know who you are as much as anything else. Um, so I don't think it's necessary. I think that would probably go on as, depending on who, if I knew the actor, maybe it might be slightly different. I just think, I don't know, it just, for me it doesn't fit because you are a person and you're the character. I want to see both. So don't do it, Chris. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I've gone wrong all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Back over there. It's literally going round again, the same people. Yeah. Um, uh, just on the audition, um, yeah. again, is it quite variable in terms of uh, the director you're working with, how oh, the auditions are run, completely. and do, what's a uh, casting di director's general role in the audition? Uh, well, my key thing is to make actors feel really comfortable before they come in the room, because you've got 10, 15, 20 minutes with, uh, you know, auditioning, and you're shitting your pants already. So, excuse my language. That's um, fine. And... Uh, so I want it to be a good experience, you know. Um, so I try to, and I know people in this room who have auditioned with me, um, who, you know, I, it's make you feel relaxed. So that one, it's a nice experience, but two, the actor gets their best performance because they're, they are in a, in a positive environment. There are some directors who just don't talk, they don't engage with actors, which I find very bizarre. Um, but then they're amazing visual, you know, uh, directors and then there's other actors who just get the uh, directors who get completely involved so it re is really varied but I, my thing is just to make sure it's a good and happy environment but, but so basically it's, it's, it's and encourage and give notes if the director's not giving notes then absolutely I'm going to give notes because uh, it's almost like there's, there's almost like two directors effectively doing it kind of yeah, thing yeah it can be and often producers chip in as well you know it's um, sometimes you have a very quiet director and a very uh you know, involved producer. So it just really depends. Yeah. And if also I think they're giving the wrong notes and I know that the actor can give a performance by me giving them a note that's relevant to the character, I'll do that as well. And make sure they have more than one go. Oh, another one at the front. <laughs> it's ping pong. Just in terms of uh, you're saying they want to know the real you. Um, at the beginning of the audition process, they're asking you on camera, tell us your name, tell us a bit about yourself and where you're from. I I'm wondering that. if if that's not part of the audition process? No. no. Okay. The audition process is the character. I, I think if you're sort of doing something for like the States or something and there's the director's not there, then maybe. But generally it is But are they actually looking at that to try and see a bit of the real you? No, before you no, do the scene? I think that's just as people, you know, you want to know who you're going to work with. Right. You don't want to work with the character necessarily, you want to work with the person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I've, de I've never done that. I've never filmed someone talking about themselves. I just told it's an Italian thing. We live in yeah. I Italy. We're here for oh, an Italian okay. production. So, uh, Interesting. Yeah, it's an Italian thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You'd hate Italy, by the way, because everything is about aesthetics and uh, nothing about and functionality no whatsoever. <laughs> if I it do looks good, it doesn't though. matter whether it works or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a question. <laughs> Could we hear from the Italian on that, please? <laughs> <laughs> she's the she Italian. Disagrees. She's the Italian. No, I'm I'm the that I agree. Oh, you do agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a. Oh. <laughs> No, hello. Hi. Um, well, uh, yes, I, I'm Italian and I live in Italy, but yes. I would really like to work in the England yeah. to, to expand my working area. So yeah. ha, what would you suggest me to do? Like, um, I don't know, get an agent or are there particular websites that should sign up uh, I to? I think, or um, yes, if you can get some representation, that would definitely help and sort of try and, and research agents so you get, it's not some dodgy one who calls himself an agent when they're not. Um, and, um, you know, send a reel to cast and directors. Mm -hmm. But is it possible for us to, uh, because people said, uh, they will never cast you if you don't live in England. 
I think, you know, often you might be we might be doing a, a production that is filming in Italy as well. So it, I think there's no harm. I think there is that thing that basically we are going to be casting people who are here, mm -hmm. generally. But you never know. And um, I think, but if you are going to do it and you are going to send reels, yeah. um, then make sure you do something on your reel in English. Because after yeah, that, yeah, yeah. I'll get reels with, um, in, you know, in Spanish or whatever, or completely French, which... You know, I've got basic on both, so I do understand <laughs> some of it, but it's not necessarily going to give me an indication of, uh, you know, I need to see, fundamentally, we're sort of going to be casting you speaking English, possibly, mm -hmm. uh, so that's what I need to see as well. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I believe we have a question on the second row with the Anne chap. Um, hello. Um, sorry if this is too broad a question, but I'm, I'm, I'm a director and I've sort of directed two shorts on minuscule budgets. Yeah. And basically when you haven't got quite the budget to get a casting director can you give me like tips to casting and how to cast better just you know how long secret you got? secret recipe that's like 10 years worth of conversation <laughs> i've got time i think um but it's sort of a lot of what i've said you know it depends yes you've got definitely audition people and you've got they've got to feel right for the role and it's the it's the jigsaw puzzle of everyone fitting together um, I mean, I, I think it is hard to, to do a film without a casting director um, because we have a lot of knowledge uh, and so that you can get on with everything else and we'll just present you with a nice list of people. Um, you know, that is our specialism. But people definitely do it. Uh, sometimes I have known to work for free. I don't tend to do it anymore. Um, but I've definitely done it on shorts before. Um, so I think... If you don't have the money to pay a casting director, you could certainly go sort of approach casting associates who are going to sort of make the move soon and are fully capable of being a casting director. They just haven't made, you know, done it, gone out in their own name yet because they could do it at their weekends and stuff. So, you know, they, you can get casting directors for free. It just depends on, you know. If the script's good, basically. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> can I if we like it. Just can I ask one more question as well? Maybe it's a bit more uh, specific. Uh, when you're uh, so far with my two shorts, I've been lucky enough to work with friends and sort of cast yeah. informally. Um, when you sort of spread the net to um, you know um, bigger names, yeah. is there ever uh, a, a sort of how much time can you ask for rehearsals and read-throughs and workshops? With was that totally? I think individual? Um, if you're not paying, are you going to pay? You're paying them. Um, I'm still looking at the budget. Okay, I think if you're going to rehearse with people, you've got to pay people. I think you've got to pay people anyway, even if it's 50 quid. Um, and um, if they are doing it for free, then it's very hard to ask for a lot of their time. But then there are people who are just passionate about doing it, and they might have you know, a month between two theatre jobs, and they're happy to do it. I just... Um, I think... You know, just to say rehearsals is quite luxurious. Not many people get rehearsals anymore. Um, but uh, yeah, if any, you know, even, you know, even there's a couple of days, you know, I think. But that would just be negotiable. And I think a lot of agents wouldn't necessarily, sh you know, uh, if you can talk to an agent. That's the other thing. A good thing about having casting directors that we can speak to the agents. You're not just some random person ring them up because um, we've obviously got relationships with them. But uh, yeah, I think. Don't take the piss. That's was really helpful. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? No. Have yeah. <laughs> uh, I I'm met? No. <laughs> yeah. More about Benedict Cumberbatch yeah. now for the yeah. next 20 minutes. No. Um, I forgot, because I'm so professional, I forgot to ask one of the James Lipton ones, and you reminded me when you mentioned uh, agents. What's your favourite curse word? Bollocks. Bollocks. Yeah. Excellent choice. Yeah. Are there any more from the audience? <laughs> no, it's a nice way to finish, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> any at all? Oh, ah, there we go. Yeah. Um, is it appropriate to ask to read for another part when you're in an audition? Ah. Or should you do that with your agent beforehand? I think definitely it's advisable to do it with your agent, get to have your agent do the conversation before you come in the room because as a casting director, we'll know if we're veering towards someone already uh, or if it's completely inappropriate. Um, I have had asked, have, uh, people do it and it's absolutely fine because they they're more than you know, capable of doing the other role and they've come in and they've done both characters and you know, directors and producers are happy 
that, for that to happen. Some aren't. Um, and that's why it is better to do it before, I think, because then that conversation can happen with your agent and, you know, yeah. And also if you're auditioning and you might be running late and then, you know, as often happens and you're rushing out to get someone and then you've got, to, you've got like a four minute window to get you into the audition room and then you've got to deal with, you know, that as well. So, yeah, beforehand, I think. Thank advisable. you. If that's it for questions, let's all give Jane a round of applause. Thank oh, you very much. One more oh, it's the one. Is there one? I saw the hand. Last minute, yeah. Um, <laughs> for a, uh, for a northern actor who's just starting off yes. um, and the acting aspect of it all, what would you advise, um, or would you give any advice, uh, as the main uh, the hub is down in London, without moving down to London? Would I don't think you need to anymore. No. I mean, I've moved to Manchester, so I'm a bit biased. But um, good work. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, there's a lot of actors who are based here that, you know, you can live um, much more cheaply and if you're prepared to go down on a train the night before or the morning and go for auditions, then that, and you know, you're open to do that and you've got somewhere to stay, I think, fundamentally, that if, if it's a, something that's filming in London and they want to have London-based actors, then if you've got somewhere to stay and you're not forking out money for a B&B, then, it helps. Then, um, then I think you can certainly uh, still be based in Manchester and, and, and work in London. But there is this sort of thing with which is another one of my irritants um, on Spotlight, where people say they're based in London and they're not. And the only reason that's irritating is because there is a lot of stuff being made up here now. Obviously, as you're sure you're aware. And so, if you are looking for local actors, if I've done a search on Spotlight, you won't come up because you're down as London. And I think that a lot of that is advice from agents to say you're London-based when you're not, because I think they think you're not going to get work. But I think people's mentality is changing, especially with the media city. I think yeah. it is changing. And I have suggested to Spotlight that they have a based in uh, and have bases in. Yeah, that's because a good it, idea. you know, there's so much going on, you know, in Scotland as well. And it's like, you know, if you say you're in London, you live in Scotland, and you're not, you're going to miss out on jobs. So it sort of goes both ways, really. Thank you. Any more questions? It's like an auction. Well, we've had the rehearsal round of applause. Now it's time for the main thing.